If I asked you what John George Haig was guilty of, you may not know. But if I asked you what the acid bath murderer was guilty of, I'm sure you'd have a morbid idea. Haig was given his nickname thanks to the way he disposed of his victims. While serving a prison sentence for theft and fraud, Haig had a lot of time to think. Here, he came up with his murderous plan to get rich quick. Between 1944 and 1949, he murdered and disposed of three men and three women for financial gain. He disposed of the bodies with the aid of sulfuric acid. He reduced the bodies of his victims down to sludge, which he could then pour down the drain. Haig was born on 24th of July, 1909, in Stamford, Lincolnshire, UK. He was an only child and had somewhat of an isolated upbringing. He described his childhood as lonely and bleak. His father had built a fence around the house and his only friends were his pets and a neighbor's dog. His parents were part of the Plymouth Brethren and did not celebrate holidays such as Christmas or Easter. Bible stories were used for entertainment. He wasn't even allowed to play sports for fun. His father told him about the world being evil and that a blue blemish he had on his head was from when he sinned in his younger years. Haig was frightened he too would one day have this blemish. But as his lies, fraud and deceit continued, he noticed no mark ever appeared. He believed he was invincible to sin. This was a turning point. When he was 10 years old, he won a musical scholarship to a Catholic school in Wakefield. When at school, he was described as secretive and liked playing pranks. His favourite being forging teachers' signatures. He found this easy to do, and this is what would later lead him into the life of fraud and ultimately murder. He left school at the age of 17. Haig was not only confident, but dressed well, and people would comment on his sparkling blue eyes. His fraud path continued with him selling people's cars that didn't belong to him, or sometimes didn't even exist. He wrote letters about his early life. One of them, he stated, I discovered there were easier ways to make a living than to work long hours in an office. I did not ask myself whether what I was doing was right or wrong. That seemed to be irrelevant. I merely said, this is what I wish to do. In 1934, Haig married 21-year-old Beatrice Hammer. Although they barely knew each other, his parents allowed them to live with them. But the marriage was short, only four months, as Haig was arrested in October of the same year. Whilst he was in prison, Beatrice gave birth to a daughter who she placed for adoption. Haig later told her the marriage was not official as he already had a wife. He was a pathological liar. He was soon imprisoned a second time, because of fraud, for 15 months. He was imprisoned a third time after a major fraud incident in Surrey and Sussex. He had set up three solicitor's offices, one in Chantry Lane, London, one in Guildford, Surrey, and a third in Hastings, East Sussex. He called himself Mr. William Cato Adamson. He would place adverts in papers offering shares in houses left by the deceased. People would send in cheques, which he would happily live off of. He was caught when someone noticed he had spelt Guildford wrong and thought a solicitor of all people would not misspell something like that. Haig thought himself a class above the petty criminals he was now surrounded by. During his third spell in prison, he realised if he wanted to live the high life he longed for, he would have to commit the perfect crime. A murderous plan began to form. From prison library books, he learned of a double murderer, a man called Sarat, who was known as the French acid bath murderer. Haig learned one could dissolve a human body with sulfuric acid. Haig got a job in prison as a tinsmith. Here, he had access to sulfuric acid. He would pay other prisoners to collect dead mice and rodents for him. He would fill jars with different amounts of acid and place the rodent's body in the liquid and observe. He would watch how fast they decompose and from this, he learned how to dispose of a human body. His first victim was William Donald McSwan. 
it was a chance encounter at the Goat Pub. In 1944, Haig met with his former employer and friend. He told McSwan he had a workshop, and McSwan told him he had a pinball machine that needed fixing. Haig invited him to Gloucestershire Road, his workshop in London. It was here McSwan was battered to death and submerged in a 40-gallon drum filled with sulfuric acid. Haig had a polite relationship with the McSwans, so when he told them their son had gone into hiding to avoid being called up for military service and produced forged letters from their son, they had no reason to believe he was behind their son's murder. They hired him as a rent collector, the job their son was previously doing. But he wanted more. He decided he wanted the properties, not just the rent. But the deeds were in the McSwan's name. He told Donald and Amy McSwan William had come back to visit them and was at his workshop. He lured Donald in first, then Amy. He had two barrels side by side ready for his victims. Once the bodies were completely decomposed, he poured the remaining sludge down the drain. He forged signatures and made people believe the McSwans had moved to America. It took him three years to spend the McSwans' money. It was time for another victim. He had killed three people and gotten away with it. He was confident he could do it again. Haig moved into the Onslow Court Hotel and rented a workshop in Leopold Road, Crawley, West Sussex. Now, all he needed was a victim. He responded to an advert for the sale of a house in London, placed by Dr Archibald Henderson and his wife. He offered them more money than asked for, telling them the property was undervalued. He told Henderson he was a businessman and had an engineering company, He proposed a joint venture and invited Henderson to visit his workshop in Leopold Road. There, he pulled a revolver out, which he had stolen from Henderson's house earlier that day, and shot him in the back of the head. He returned to Rose Henderson and told her her husband had taken ill. She happily drove with him to Leopold Road, where she met the same fate as her husband. Once again, the acid bath murderer had two barrels already lined up next to each other for his victims. Once the bodies were sludge, he took them outside to a builder's yard, covered in rubble. He found a corner and emptied the barrels. He repeated what he did with the McSwans and forged the signatures and made out the Hendersons had moved to Africa. This time, it took Haig only a year to work his way through the Hendersons' money. His last victim was an elderly lady he had met during his stay at the Onslow Court Hotel. He discovered she had around £36,000 in shares and stocks and became very interested. 69-year-old Mrs. Olive Duran Deacon told Haig she wanted to have a cosmetic business making false nails. Haig invited her to his workshop in Leopold Road and suggested going into this business. Upon her arrival, he shot the elderly lady and took her jewellery and fur coat off before placing her in the acid. After which, he had a lunch break in a nearby cafe. He returned to the workshop and poured the remains outside. One of Mrs. Olive Duran Deacon's friends became concerned with her disappearance. The police began to suspect Haig and his criminal record. On Monday, 28th of February, 1949, Haig was asked if he could come to the station to assist with a few inquiries. He confessed, stating, I've destroyed her with acid. You'll find the sludge that remains at Leopold Road. Every trace is gone. How can you prove murder if there is no body? You see, Haig's problem was he misinterpreted the phrase body of evidence. He believed if there was no body, he could not be charged with murder. Upon searching Haig's property in Leopold Road, they found papers tying him to all of his previous victims. They also found a uniform, a rubber raincoat, rubber gloves leading up to the elbow, a butcher's apron, a gas mask and long wader boots. They also found a dry cleaner's receipt for a fur coat, a recently fired revolver, 28 pounds of human body fat, 
three gallstones, part of a left foot, not quite dissolved, 18 fragments of human bone, upper and lower dentures, the handle of a red handbag and a lipstick container. Haig's trial took place at Lewis Crown Court on July 1949. He would try to plead insanity by telling the jury he had drank the blood of his victims because he was a vampire. This plea was ignored and he was found guilty within 20 minutes. On the 10th of August 1949, the acid bath murderer was hanged at Wandsworth Prison. During his last few days, he wrote a letter to his family. In none of the letters did he state any remorse. Before his death, Madame Tussauds requested a fitting for a death mask. Madame Tussauds erected a wax figure of Haig, complete with his very own clothing that he had happily given to the museum. <laughs>